believe then that the Fed created asset bubbles post-2020 because of QE? Uh, yeah. Yes? And these bubbles, are they dangerous to the economic, the economic system? Should they pop? Um, of course, always. Okay. Um, so the real question is, why on earth, and really that's what you're getting at, why on earth did they do it? Because it's quite obvious what would happen you know, right. when, when you do that. If you create too much money for consumption, you get consumer price inflation. They did a whole lot of that. Amazing. I mean, it's, it's essentially, you know, 80% of the entire money supply that has been created ever by the Fed has been created in recent yes. years. I yes. mean, this is mind-blowing. So massive. So why did they do this? Um, well, here comes the next surprise. Um, they, they did this intentionally, but it's not a secret plot. It is not a conspiracy. No, they told us in advance. It's, it's right there. Just people don't pay attention. Go back to August 2019. There was a conference, it's the, the regular annual Jackson Hole conference yes. for you know, the central bankers, the Fed, and they'd invited BlackRock, the world's biggest asset manager yes. by far. And BlackRock uh, was asked to present this paper. They presented their um, proposal, what monetary policy should do next. And you know what? It said, the next crisis will come, and when it comes, we must create inflation. Now the interesting thing is they never give a reason why. And they weren't even asked why, as if nobody was interested in that. But, oh, okay, we must create inflation. Yes, sir. And they said, um, oh, do it. The way Professor Werner was saying in Japan, QE2, um, oh, they didn't actually mention me by name, okay, but they referred to my policy, uh, which I just explained, namely, uh, for the central bank to purchase assets from the non-bank sector, which is highly unusual. Central banks almost never do this. You do this once a century um, sort of thing. It's very rare. And okay, that was the proposal. And then, how do we know this is exactly what in March 2020 the Fed did? Well, number one, we have the data. It's exactly the data uh, for the Fed purchases that conforms to this and the data on the banks. So there were massive purchases of a corporate paper, um, corporate bonds, and, you know, non-bank assets from, uh, from non-banks. But how do we know this is the BlackRock plan? Well, again, that's official, because in March 2020, the Federal Reserve officially hired BlackRock and said, okay, that's your proposal, you do it. Go out and do it. They hired them, and it's on their website. You just check it out. Right, well, the M2 money you bought above, the money supply growth. The M2 money supply has been contracting over the last 12 months. Okay. Um, negative growth we haven't seen since I think, the, I believe, the end of the Great Depression. Is this going to lead to a severe economic contraction? Um, yes. Now, so the sequence is um, August 2019, uh, BlackRock says, let's create inflation. March 2020, implementation massive purchases of um, assets from non-banks by the Fed, pumping new Fed money through the banking system into the economy. It takes 18 months for this to work its way through, as I want, you know, in March 2020, I said we'll get the high, significant, double-digit inflation 18 months later. That's what we got. Fine. So you must remember the credit creation, you know, leads, and it takes one and a half years for, this, for, the, for the economy to respond. So what happened next, and that's what you're referring to, um, after they completely ballooned credit creation, after that, they let it sink back and it actually started to shrink. So we are now have shrinking credit creation, which means that economic activity is likely to now decelerate in the coming 18 months uh, quite significantly. Um, and of course, you can still reverse it. There, there are measures to reverse it, but they're not yet being implemented. So at the moment, our best forecast is to expect a serious deceleration of economic activity in the US and also in, in quite a lot of European countries. Deceleration in terms of, in terms of GDP growth? Yes. Are we talking about negative GDP growth? Um, at the moment, it looks like the deceleration will go as far as shrinking the economy, negative GDP growth, yeah. Okay. That's